Welcome to CDH's YouTube channel. My name is Ko Fujimoto. Hello. Today's topic is green card holders tax mistakes in gifting before your exit from the US. The subtitle of this video is Do you know if you are US domiciliary or not? Um, so let's get started. First and foremost, you must know the striking characteristic of US gift taxes. The person who makes a gift, it's called donor, is liable for US gift taxes. Many countries, many European countries or Japan, uh, they levy taxes on the person who receive the gift, you know, beneficiary or donee. Therefore, if you live in the U.S. and if you plan to become a donor, you must watch this video. So, I use the term domicile. Dictionaries definition is here, the country that a person treats as their permanent home or lives in and has a substantial connection with. Good. Then let's ask the IRS. Well, I didn't really ask the person in IRS. I, wa I looked it up in the IRS website. It's a rather long definition, but I'm going to highlight the key point. Let me read this first. Domicile is defined as living within the country with no definite present intent of living. Determining domicile for estate and gift tax purposes is fact specific. Once a non-citizen establishes the United States as their domicile, they remain a United States domiciliary until a new domicile is established. If there is a doubt as to the location of domicile, there is a rebuttable presumption that the descendant dissident was domiciled within the country where they resided. So let me highlight the key point. Living with a country with no indefinite present intent of living. So intention is important and it's a fact specific. Um, the fact specific uh, determination. All right. So let's get to the practical applications discussion. Are you a U.S. domiciliary? Sorry, it's a hard to pronounce sometimes. But uh, if you are, yes, then you can use unified credit. Unified credit. In the 2023, the amount of unified credit is $12.92 million. I'm not going to explain how this unified credit works. However, the big picture is it's not going to be taxable until you use up this $12.92 million in both from gifting and estate. So, as a result, most of the U.S. population does not pay federal gift and uh, estate taxes. Uh, you, have, you probably haven't heard of people who, wow, I paid a lot of gift taxes or, you know, estate taxes because the amount is very, very high today. On the other hand, if the answer is no, what's going to happen? Well, number one, you cannot use 
the unified credit. That means you must pay gift taxes on the property that are located in the U.S. Technical term is U.S. Citus property. Good news is there is an exclusion. Exclusion is to intangible assets located in the U.S. such as you know that not the tangible asset it's an intangible asset such as mutual funds stocks that you keep in the US so if you are non US domiciliary you must pay gift taxes except the gift of intangible assets that are located in the US territory no, not not the right word. U U.S. Not located. Not in the U.S. Okay. The then let's touch on how the taxes are calculated. Well, before I get to that section, I need to show where uh, the you know, not the citation, but the location of website where you can verify uh, that is true. And I think I have one cautionary point just to make my point clear. It's a number two point. Anyway, let's get to the example here. Um, the, so this couple, let's, let's assume this couple are uh, this couple is a non-domicile couple and they have a daughter living in the US and they want to give a gift they want to give a gift maybe maybe this couple is just about to leave uh, for their home country permanently to retire and plane ticket is already booked they sold uh, you know most of the items and their plane will depart in uh, one month let's uh, let's let's assume that way so if this couple wants to give this California uh, residential property to the daughter because they are non domicile and because the property is not a tangible property this is a taxable gift and let's say if they also have a securities stocks uh, in the US but because the securities are non-tangible or intangible asset and because of that this would be a non-taxable gift let's get back to the US domicile if we assume this couple is a US domicile couple what can they use they can use unified credit 12.92 million multiplied by 2 24 million or 25 million 25 25 no 20 almost 26 million dollars assuming that they have not used any portion of their credit uh, before okay so at this point you must be very curious how much would be my tax liability so i'm gonna uh, touch upon the u.s gift tax calculations and this is how you calculate uh, the tax amount. Tax amount would be your gifts the fair market value, fair market value minus annual exclusion to the person that you give. So in 2023, you can give tax free up to $17,000 gift to one person. If it's two, 
34,000, 17 and 17. But in this case, tax amount is gifts, the fair market value minus annual exclusion and multiplied by gift tax rates. Gift tax rates ranges from 18% to 40%. Highest is 40, the lowest is 18. And similar to our income tax, US income tax bracket system, they use a similar marginal tax bracket system. So you can imagine the tax liability of gifting as a non-domiciliary can be very costly. All right, so finally, you let me touch upon how how the uh, how to determine if you are domiciliary or non-domiciliary. Domicile is determined by facts and circumstances. So what are the facts? The it's a listing listing. So let's go through the list. Statement of intent. You know, written evidence of your intention of staying in the U.S. in a visa application, tax returns, and will, and etc. Length of U.S. residence, how long you have been living in the United States. Do you have a green card? Green card, because green card is a permanent residency. It's a permanent residency. Style of living in the U.S. and abroad. How often do you go to other country? How, you know, how, how many times you visit that country? You know, lengths and so forth. Ties to the former country is similar uh, concept here. Country of residence. This topic itself is a, is a very broad and deep topic. Uh, but uh, okay, where do you live? Where is your main home? Principal residence, country of residence. Location of business interest. Where do you have your businesses? Uh, places where club, church affiliations, voting registration, and driver's licenses are maintained. Location of your family members. Um, and of course there are other factors determining whether uh, you are u.s domiciliary is based on facts and circumstances i think you would need uh, professionals to help you form your tax position and of course the IRS can challenge your position at any time. At the same time, same time, if you become a U.S. citizen, you obtain a U.S. citizenship, you are permanently U.S. domiciliary. So you don't have to worry about if you are a U.S. domicile or not, but if you hold a green card uh, status it's a facts and circumstances testing now I'm not gonna I am not uh, recommending you to become a US citizen it's it's a far bigger decision uh, making uh, compared to your tax decision uh, so let's set it aside but a tax characteristic or tax significance of U.S. Uh, citizenship is you are always U.S. domiciliary. I hope you enjoyed our video and I used English to prepare this video but I think in the YouTube you can press the button of closed caption button and go to I think translation section I think the setting uh, button. I think uh, one right next to it, it's uh, like a digit widget type of button. And then you can translate English to your own language and understand this concept better. 
I aim to help you and your family lead a better life as a cross-border professional and their family members. Thank you and have a wonderful day. And this is a disclaimer. I got to show you at this page for sure. And please contact us if you have any questions. The, our website and also our uh, email address is crossborder at cdhcpa.com. Have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye.